hi guys welcome to my channel today's video is just bringing you up to speed concerning the spine treatment for my roxy journal of stitchery christmas red book now in the last video when i left you i was planning on creating a spine treatment inspired by the spine on this journal in this book that is um, become very much my favorite it's the spine that's tucked in here let me find the picture which is um tilly tilly rose and it's like heaps and heaps of layers of fabric stitched down to create the um the edge of this journal I hope you can hear me well because a storm is rolling through Brisbane at the moment. It's not bad here. That's the treatment there that caught my eye. And I thought, oh, how luscious. So in my last video, you would have been watching me play with the ideas of doing that on the side of my journal. And I started to cut the fabrics that I would lay down and stitch to make the spine treatment. And I was going to go this way. I put the little project aside and I came back to it about three days later and started thinking about how I was actually going to do this and I sort of I didn't like where it was heading so I liked the concept of the the mess of fabrics stitched down and then build something on it and it made me remember a tag I did in the Ann Brooks 52 tag challenge this one here now if I remember rightly the prompt was layers and what I did for this is folded the fabrics laces papers in half once they were cut into strips and just kept stitching them down making layers and layers of um, texture okay so I thought well being that we're on that still in the train of thought that I was thinking I then came back to my piece let me get that out of the way and decided instead of going down my spine I'd go across just like that tag because I loved it but I just wanted to take it a little bit further and actually do an embroidery on top of it which is sort of more in keeping with what's in the actual journal plus it's neutral which fits what's in the journal with the pop of the red. I think my problem was when I looked at these colors in mass with the neutrals of the sari silk, I just didn't like the colors. I think that was the number one issue. Um, I only wanted a hint of these types of colors. They just didn't fit the project. So those scraps have been rejected and I started working with just the cream sari silk and then I had a little bit of this soft cream satin, which technically isn't sari silk, but I had some strips of it. So that became the little soft highlight. I then randomly stitched lace in amongst it. And I got this lace, which is just a $2 shop lace. And I cut it into three pieces. And that also became little bits of texture within the layers so I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see it sort of see the principle there see that stitched down and then I folded it up and started more sari silk and ruffled it and stitched it there's the pail there's a bit of lace and there is some uh, rag paper vintage paper that I got from Rachel at Roxy Creations in her paper packs so that's the paper that I'm using and I've just been cutting slithers off of it. Now in the journal, I made my hexagon piece, if you remember, out of this paper. So already this was sort of nibbled into and features within the journal. So it sort of all comes together as a bit more of a match than bringing in some of these which don't even appear in it. Having said that, I do want to still use a little bit of the red sari silk to create like a little floral cherry blossom circle. That technique is in my journal, but not using this particular 
um, fabric. So it's sort of, I really feel like it matches better. I think that would make sense. Now what I've done is to show you how I did this before we get on to the um, project itself and moving it forward is with the Anne Brooks challenge and its layers, you just get yourself a strip of fabric or sari silk, whatever it may be. Casper's just come into the room and he's looking up at me as if he wants to jump up, but we all know you're not good at that, son. Move along, kitty cat. So I'm just wanna, I've got to get to the end here. So I've left that to show you so that you get a bit of a feel for how I did this treatment. So, being that I'm right-handed, I'm gonna start this side and I'm just gonna tuck that in there. I do need to trim it a little bit, but I'll do that after I've attached it to my spine. So I do have red lines here marking out that three inch spine that we did the other day. So that's my zone, if you will, for where I need to stitch. So I've laid it in and now I'm just doing a little running stitch across to secure the sari silk into position. And I can sort of feel there where that edge of ruffle is so that my little stitch can just sort of sneak in there like so. Now that I'm getting to the end of my space, that three inch spine allocation that we've given ourselves for my journal, yours might be different because your journal may not be thick or it may be even thicker. So now to make it easier on myself, I turn my piece around because we're going to just check where that mark is and that's the three inch mark. Before I carry on, I'm just going to concertina up that sari silk, giving me a little fold. And then I'm going to bring my needle back in and stitch it down again, working my way across to the opposite side again. And that creates the little bump in the fabric. So it's as simple as that. It did take me a while, don't get me wrong. This was an all day event. And then even last night, went to my mate's place for dinner and I sat for probably two hours still working on it. But once you get a bit of a system, it does come together. It's persistence, this one, but it does give such a pretty effect. Okay. So now I'm back over to my, my border, my little red line there. So it's just now a case of bend that again, making another little fold. The fact that it's slightly smaller or narrower than the last doesn't matter. And before I turn around, now I've got my thread. And come back the other way, I just want to Oops. I suppose it doesn't matter because I've got enough to get across. So let's just flip it again, right-handed. The rain's just stopped. It's like these lines of storms coming through. Summer is here. There wasn't much predicted, actually. It just arrived it wasn't vicious so it was good it's just some good heavy rain i think it's been going about 20 minutes but i think it's the front of something that's going to stick around for a few days okay so now we can finish that off because that piece of sari silk is actually secure now okay so before I get carried away, I'm going to thread my needle and we go again. But this time we might put some lace in. Yep, the rain's gone. 
little bit of thunder at the beginning, but then just rain. Okay, let's grab our lace and let's just pop a piece in there. Once again, tucking it, oops, you can't see, tucking it right in there, bringing my needle up, a couple little stitches to catch it. Lovely. And then away we go again and just scooting along with a little running stitch to secure it. It is really simple, very effective, gets rid of more scraps, little bits and pieces that are lying around and just gives you a really interesting side to your journal. Should feel beautiful to touch too. So we're coming to the end. I'm just gonna pop my needle down, trim this off, which is slightly past my mark. That way if I need to trim it more, I can. If it hangs over and looks okay, great. So now that can be folded up because we're going to now insert another piece of sari silk. So we just pick it up, lay it down, using the needle, find roughly where it needs to start, right next to that lace. And being that to make it easier on my hands, right to left, I'm just gonna flip it around again and come back. You could pin it, and I did start pinning as I went, but then I sort of got it where I could feel that ridge in there. You can feel the edge of that lace. And as long as your fabric or your sari silk or whatever morsel it is you're stitching down, is just peeking up on the side of that previous row, well then you'll have this little, little bit sticking up in the air. I hope this makes sense. I'm trying to explain it the best way I can think. So if you haven't done the Anne Brooks 52 tag challenge from a couple years ago, I'd highly recommend you find the videos and do it because I learned so much. It is a small little project every week. There's Bandit. A small little project each week, so it's very achievable. You don't have to make them into tags. You could just put those little morsels that you create into a journal a little stitchery book. Like it's just a really great way of experiencing different stitches. Sometimes it was stitches. Sometimes it was collaging things together and you had a bit of a guideline. Like this one is not a stitch. It's collaging, but it's layers. There's all sorts in there. Even if you just go through the videos and just pick say 12 and have a go at them because they will teach you something. Anne does the little video, sets you up for the week, or the, uh, yeah, the week it was, 52 weeks in the year, and then away you go. So if you want a little side project and you haven't done it, I might, I'll just make a note here, 52, 51, 52, 52 tags. I'll put a link in my description below because if you're a beginner and you're starting to think about composition and making things look right, it's a really good way of getting a feel for all of that. And I guess you could probably even go to the Instagram page or put in hashtag 52 tags and that will take you to so many YouTubers that were doing the project. So if you like someone's particular style, you probably find that they may, if they're a prominent YouTuber out there in the slow stitch scrapbook junk journal world, I could be pretty confident that they've done the project. Okay, so I'm just now coming back to finish off 
that little row. I'm so close to the bottom now. I'd say one more piece of sari silk will get me there. Before I start the last piece, I just wanna show you how I put the paper in. So you've seen how I did the lace. Now there's nothing stopping you once you've done your piece, you decide that you need more lace or more paper. By all means, all you have to do is find your spot, use your needle, open it up and lay something in. It's that simple. So let's grab a piece of paper. We might just do a little strip that doesn't even go all the way, just for something a bit different. Some strips are smaller than others. So that you can see is just three rows of text. I've kept the side just for interest. I'm folding it in half because that's roughly now the width of my piece. Now, where was my needle finished? Which side am I at? I'm over here and I have really only got a short piece. So I think what I'll do is I'll finish this thread off and get us a nice piece of thread. It's a bit too, a bit too mean. It's raining again. I think this is the start of a day or so of rain. I think that front's come through. And now, okay, so I've just knotted it off. So let's get some more thread. Gosh, you can do so much with this layering. I even had a piece of hessian out. I had envisioned, 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 I had imagined um, strips of the hessian in there, but then let me grab the piece. This little morsel was on my desk. So I had that out and I was going to work little threads through it as well, but that gave me another idea, which led me to this idea with these little flowers, which we will get to in a minute. So threaded up, ready to go. Here's my fabric, uh, my little paper morsel. So I'm just going to pop it there right on the boundary, open it up a little bit so that I can see where the middle of that paper is, the fold, and pop a couple stitches in at the beginning just to secure it, and then I'm on my way. I love stitching paper into my projects. It's just another great element to add with your laces and fabrics and trims. Consider paper, especially old paper. It's just beautiful, forever stitched into your work. Okay. This little project alone would make a great little framed element on your wall. Be so cute. So there's our little piece of paper stitched in. And now if I fold that up, we're back ready to run some fabric through. And my needle's just here, so let's get it to the edge. So we're ready to run some more sari silk, my little running stitch back through. Okay. And I've laid down my sari silk for the next row. A couple little stitches to secure that. And I'm going to just spin it around so my hands feel a little bit more comfortable going right to left because I'm right handed. So once again, just a running stitch along. So it is quick, but it's it's quick, but it's not. You seem to do, you seem to sort of motor along once you get going. It's just patience. So this would be classed as laying your background down, which we've been doing all the way through this pro project. We work out our background fabrics, get them into position. 
then we start thinking about what is the decorative element. So one more fold and I think we will class this as done. So I might just snip that little bit off in case my thread catches it. Okay. I had a guess I would say I have used probably over a meter of sari silk to do this so if you only had a little bit of sari silk maybe have a look around for some satin or some chiffon just to help pad it out because at the end of the day you could use anything to create your layers okay Alrighty, we are at the bottom. Close enough. Once we fit it to the journal itself, we if we have to add a row, easily. That's sticking up there a little bit. So I'm just going to pop a little stitch in there. Must have been a bit crooked, the sari silk, just to hold it. Now my needles become unthreaded. Slow stitch for a reason, especially when your needle comes unthreaded all the time. So it slows you down. Okay, done. So my background for my spine is done. Now, the next plan is to make these two little blossoms look like they're part of something. So I'm just gonna come up. I hope this works. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm gonna give it a go. We're going to get our needle and thread ready again. And I'm going to couch down a branch. And then along that branch will be these blossoms, flowers, trimmed with some beads is the theory so that when the book is in my bookcase I should be able to see this which brings me to another issue now I don't think I have a candy yes I do hold for a second all right okay so the plan was since day one that my Santa tag would be on the spine. That's still in debate because if I do a treatment here, I may want to see it. So this little Santy tag may get modified and appear back in the actual book. Now, if you remember in the last video, I had plans on using this pocket here for a tag. So I'm thinking now that my Santa tag may be modified and actually sit in that pocket that's that's the plan so yeah this is amazing how it always changes I haven't yet stitched my signatures in so that's the panel we created for all of the signatures to stitch on and that will have them all put into position and be underneath this decorative piece and then this decorative piece I'm getting sidetracked again will then be positioned, I don't know if you can see my spine there, will be positioned on the side of my journal like so. Let me zoom up so you can see. So there's my spine. This will have all of the signatures attached, which we'll do in another video. I was gonna start it, but I got sidetracked with this. And then that will go on there and then that will attach to the actual cover either side exposing this treatment on the side of my journal so that's the plan so we need to keep decorating this piece with my next idea now let's have a little look so I've got some Wine. Now the plan is 
is to couch this down for these little flowers to be appearing along. Now, do I want it that thick or do I want to separate it? Now, I haven't gone much further than what I just did with you doing the layers. So I've literally just grabbed my roll of twine and I'm starting to toy with these ideas. The good thing about when it's thick like this is what we could do is utilize that to make some twigs. So it gets us the thin line we need. I just pin that for a second. So I know there's layers underneath it, but I'll just have to ignore that for now. Otherwise I'll start getting really precious with what's been laid down. So I'm just gonna forget about the background now as if it's just a piece of fabric. And I'm going to pin down this twine into some sort of shape that resembles branch. I'll just twist that a little bit and that little flower can sit there. I might just grab my needle and thread and stitch that little bit down there because it's wanting to fray and I just want to secure it because I know that there'll be that little flower needing to have a branch to attach to it. So let's just get some couching stitches there just to hold that so that I can wriggle it around. It's just not gonna disintegrate on me because this one piece of twine, I've twisted it out. So you would call it a three ply twine because it's got this definite three pieces that the manufacturer has twisted together. which is handy for doing branches because you need thinner, <clears throat> thinner branches leading down to thicker. So I'll just keep going. We're freestyling here. I might bring the camera back in so you can sort of see the couching process. I've done it before many times. It's a bit of a favorite of mine. Anytime I can get nature into my stitching, I do. I'm getting ready to prepare a video for you, showing you some of the projects that are coming up in the new year. That way, if you want to participate, you've got time to get your supplies sorted and time to find the YouTuber that is hosting the project. There's maybe one or two in there that are original to me and I'm still mulling them around. So I don't know, everyone keeps coming up with fantastic projects and I'm like, eh, let's just do that. And then ideas that I have of my own things, I'm like, ah, oh, another day, another day. So I know the Roxy Journal of Stitchery will continue. So that's a definite. And I'm sure you'll all join me there. And then, yeah, there's just other projects are popping up with other creators. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yes, count me in. I'm in on that. So I do want to do a little video just showing you some of them that I will be joining in on. That way, if you don't know that YouTuber and you've come from the Roxy creation stitchery side of things and you didn't know of that particular youtuber well then you might want to go and check them out and see what they're up to and that project may actually catch your eye and open up some new challenges for you some new projects because if you hang with me they're all sort of similar ingredients like 
my first love is stitching, uh, embroidery, now that we call it slow stitch, and all of the above that encapsulates that particular activity. Junk journaling and journal making sort of sits in amongst it all because we it's a great place to hold all of our stitcheries. And then including that type of work within our journals just is right up my alley. So on a little bit of paper, I'm probably 60% paper. No, that's not right. 60% fabric and trims. And for, no, look, I'm concentrating on this branch. 40-60, 40% journals and 60% textiles we'll say and now textiles can be all manners of projects so I think that's sort of where I fit in the YouTube world I only started my channel this year I think it was about February so I'm still sort of finding my groove so to speak but I think my groove is whatever I'm making you're invited to watch I think that's it and that way when different YouTubers host different programs or activities. I can also join in and you can see my interpretation of whatever they're doing. Like we've all got our own styles. When you have a look at our needlework from the Roxy Creations project, my goodness, it's just astounding the difference in styles and ideas. And oh, it's just like looking at a massive bowl of lollies. And they're all different. It's just fan been fantastic. So I was pleased to hear we are continuing on. Now, what I want to do is get my needle and thread back down that branch. Back to about there. Hello, Casper. And maybe pick up. Now, I think I'm going to come all the way down. And where my thumb is holding that bit out, I'm going to stitch that next. And I'm going to snip it off short. Casper, no. You know you can't jump up running out of thread too so I'll probably just get a couple little stitches on that last little branch to the side yeah just a couple so we need just to hold it I can always come back if I feel like it needs more but now we're embellishing with flowers and bits and pieces so I don't think it'll be a problem when I come back through there'll be even more stitches okay so I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm gonna snip that there now let's get more thread and get our main branch secure because then we can cut the, the twine away from the roll oh goodness it's got real hot in here must be the humidity after the rain so I'm going to just jump down here on this branch oh I wonder I might make some blossoms out of that paper I wonder how that would look Should be concentrating on what I'm doing and not thinking about blossoms at this stage so I'm just whizzing down this spine securing this branch this twig so that is not going anywhere now because it's been couched down I'm just going to open up that P 
piece of paper there, those words, so that it can be seen a little more. Stitch that down as we head down to the bottom. Okay. I've got quite a few pieces in my stitchery from earlier in the year with the Roxy girls that I have done a similar technique for my for branches or twigs or you know um, to represent a tree because that allows you then to slip birds in florals so we're nearly down to the bottom I shall finish this off with a few stitches down here so we don't want it unraveling. So like a buttonhole where you have lots of stitches over and over and over to stop the fabric coming apart. I'm going to do that down the bottom here. That gets our main branch in. So now we can have a think about the blossoms. Actually, no, we need more branch, don't we? Slow down, Corinne. Getting ahead of yourself. Isn't it the way with stitching, but you sort of, you work out what you're going to do in the next step, and then you start just doing that, and then you, your mind heads off in another direction as what you're going to do next. And it's like, I get quite, you know, I'm sure you guys hear it, I get quite racy and excited because it's like, my brain's got in, getting ideas dropping in. And then I'm like, oh, I forgot to stitch this and I forgot to stitch that because I've gone off on a tangent in my mind and haven't stopped and looked at my project. Okay, so we're needles threaded ready. Get rid of this guy. So I can now disconnect that. And I'm confident that it's not going to unravel. But like I said before, I can always come back and pop another pop another branch in. Now, do we want a thick one? Yeah, I think we do. So let's just merge that twine into our branch that we just did with a few stitches. That's not going to come undone. And it looks like it's a, a fork in our tree. Okay. And now we can have a little look at what this branch might do. Yeah, I'm liking, liking that. So let's... Get a, new, a pin in here. I should be able to hold that kink in the branch there. So your spines of your journals can become so easily another stitchery for you to do. Isn't that just great? Any excuse to create another piece, hey? Okay. That's great the girls are giving the prompts a little earlier to us because December's going to be crazy for everyone, like it always is. And to have our prompts a little earlier, we can at least prepare maybe some packs of stitching to take with us on holidays or if you just want to get in get it done because you're just too busy to be picking up needles and threads 
because you know, at the end of the day, it's time with family. So we don't hold it against you if you don't do any stitching. I can't decide how many videos will appear after Christmas. I just, plans are all up in the air with the family. I'm not sure where we'll be. Will I be home? Will it be quieter than I think it might be? I will do a little bit of pre-recording because I won't be able to help myself because I'm always doing something. So I might as well just turn the camera on and go for it. So I'm just not sure, but we'll see. Still time to be thinking about such things. Now I'm just going to another stitch in there and finish that off. So now we've got to have a look at our piece to see if our little branch needs any more twigs. Okay. Oh, I don't mind that. Let me come up a little bit. I guess it's going to depend where all the blossoms go, isn't it? Hmm. I know I can do blossoms right through up here. And I can always add a little bit of twig at the top here if the blossom cluster needs the twig to look like it's going further. We can always add a bit of twig there. Let's do it. It's in. I've still got enough thread. No, more thread. Whoops, sorry guys. Let's add a little branch coming out there and we'll keep it quite thick because there probably won't be many blossoms on the bottom half of our little tree, maybe a couple, but most of it's going to be in that zone. Sun's out, the rain is gone, the humidity is building. Here comes Fudge. So I've got Casper at my feet and Fudge has just appeared. So someone will give someone a swipe. They don't fight like they used to. When they were younger, oh, they only had to look at each other and it was on. they bump into each other around a corner of a wall and it'd be on. Now that they're a lot older, I think they're about 13, 14, they're um, a little bit more tolerant of each other, which is good. Okay, so my branch, extra little itty bit, is in. I haven't gone past my edge of my thing, have I? Just a bit. That's okay. I can always. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with my branches. So let's end that off. Now it's blossoms. Now you'll see I've got my beads sitting nearby because I think we'll have to put a few of them in. Okay. <clears throat> That's great. It's just a twig, just something to build on. Let's have a look at the fabrics. I think we'll go this dark burgundy. It's, got, it's quite stiff too compared to this. So this silk is a, a different quality silk. And I'm sort of liking it because it's holding its own when I cut out a little circle. To make a blossom. Oops. So 
going to just rough cut. Don't overthink it. Little morsels to place down. If I fold that in half, I could cut two at a time, couldn't I? Let's speed things up a little. And then I'm placing a little French knot in the centre to secure them. Oh my gosh, that's bodgy. Look at that. So we're just scattering them down the piece. Now, I might do two more. Then I want to have a look at this paper. I'm wondering if we could do some little circles out of that. It'd be quite cute. Some smaller ones. Oh, that's terrible. Look at that. That's like, oh, goodness me. Give up on that one. Okay, let's get this paper. Let's cut a couple little Who was a famous artist that could draw a purple a oh, purple a perfect circle? Was it Leonardo? Michelangelo or or Van Gogh, oh, I can't remember. Someone out there will know. There was a, a very famous, famous artist that could draw a perfect circle. Or have I just got that wrong? Probably. I remember hearing that when I was at school, I'm sure. Uh, so I could have it wrong. Gosh, that was a long time ago, so who knows? Yeah, I'm liking that. So these little morsels will be stitched down into position. And I might use a bead or a pearl to secure them. I might dig out some buttons. Like we could really do all sorts. It's just building up the little floral elements for our little branch tree. And I might find some embroidery cotton and do some loopy French knots. You know, when you do a French knot and it goes wrong and you've got this loop they're quite effective if you can master your errors and use them to help build up interest. So I can definitely get a few more of these little guys in. I might look at this other colour, red. See, it's dyed differently. And put some lighter red into the equation. That so it looks like there's a bit of light bouncing around on the branch. I don't mind that these little furry bits are touched so they can be dropped in there. I might go for a bit of a rummage and have a look through the laces and maybe we can cut some little circles of lace to layer in there. So I think it'll be a case of find different bits of pieces, cut out a heap of circles and just have them on my board here, ready to grab as I just cluster away. And then 
in amongst it I can drop beads. I might zoom in so you get a bit of a more of a, a view here. This one's up here are held in with a little French knot. You can just make it out there. So imagine if that was pinned down with a little bead, more knots. Um, let's have a look at the lace bucket and see if there's anything. So even some of those can go in, some of those, some champagne. So we're sort of building it up. So see that lace there, it's those little flowers there. They could be fussy cut out and they're already a flower. So they're perfect to add as well because that tells the eye, if they can't figure out when they look at your piece, the non-stitchers out there, and we all know who they are, we're surrounded by them. They can't figure out that that's the start of a piece of floral element from nature by adding some little actual flower pieces it really makes it come together for people to go ah oh, yes you're trying to create whatever it may be so don't be afraid to sort of hunt through your laces and find some little florally bits and bobs to add to it i'm still not sure if i'll use these or not i'll have to go looking to to see if there's any braids but I think they would work, especially if I put something in the center of them to sort of help tone them all together. I just glanced over here on my desk and I've got a little bag of little rectangles here that have come out of something. That rectangle cut away gives me a shape that to me sort of feels a bit florally. Maybe some of those get worked into it as well, in amongst it, just to build up some bits and pieces. Okay, I'm gonna leave the video there because if I go too much further, there might be something in my stash that I just haven't seen. I'm sort of glancing around my table and randomly looking at things. So I just want to take a moment, take a breath, and just start building up bits and pieces that could be used. But I think you've got the general gist of how I'm preparing this. So I need to find some buttons, some of those little flowers. I've got plenty of the little red guys cut out. It's sort of just getting all your ducks in a row first, I think. Those beads there, these guys, they're too pink. So I'm going to take them away. I like the look of all those bits. I've got some paper cut. Yep. That's pretty good. So yeah, even the center of that lace could be used. It is within the background, so probably wouldn't in that case. What else is in my little box of tricks here? See, there's, everyone's got this trim. It's pretty common everywhere now. We might um, sneak a few of them off and just add them to the maybe stitched in pile. See the other thing too, you can create out of Hessian things. Now it will fray. So let's say you've cut a circle. I'm getting sidetracked again, for goodness sakes. So I've cut my circle very roughly. Then I'd get my art glitter glue, which of course is down the end of the table. Hold for a second. Gosh, where did that hour go? I've just looked up at the TV, which I'm projecting towards, and it's like 54 minutes already. For goodness sakes, I need more time. I could seriously just leave the camera working and just keep filming, because I'm stitching anyway. I should have a setup in the TV room. So while my husband's watching a movie, 
you and I could keep stitching. I'd have to whisper to you so that I did, didn't interfere with his TV, but we could just keep stitching. We could go for hours. Be non-stop TV. I'd be interested to see how many would stay with me, but you could come and go because, you know, you have to go to the fridge. You've got to cook dinner. So we could all just slip off, do our thing, come back. Husbands would be beside us watching their TV. So you can see that. So I've created a little circle, a bit of glue around the outer edge. That'll just stop it from fraying. And that potentially is something that could be made into an element for a branch like this. I'm not sure if I use it or not. I might do. I'll just leave it there in the goodies. But that's a start anyway. I might grab a couple more of those. So I can take this now into the TV room and just sort of have a play and see, you know, what comes of it. What else is in my box of tricks? I do have heaps of these Rosetti things too. So I might just pop one there just in case because you never know. All right, let's leave it at that. Let's get this, the pin back in the glue, which has gone missing. There it is. I will gather together some elements of this sort of nature feel um, and then just start clustering and working out how I sort of create some blossoms. So that'll take me a few days to fiddle around with. So I will update you in the next video with how this spine piece is coming together. And hopefully I've stitched the signatures into the spine by now. And um, yeah, it looks like it's coming together as a bit of a journal, but we'll see. Okay, guys, look after yourself and see you in the next video. Bye.